Welcome to Basketball Cinema, where we revisit the most important and iconic games in NBA history. I'm Jay Canada, and today we're looking at Game 7 of the 2018 Western Conference Finals between the Houston Rockets and Golden State Warriors. In the summer of 2016, the NBA landscape was changed in a massive way, when the 73-9 Warriors were able to add former league MVP Kevin Durant to their roster. Reaction from fans and media in the NBA world was severe and rightfully so, as the Warriors would go on to dominate the league over the next two seasons. In fact, in the 2017 and 18 playoffs, Golden State went a shocking 32-6 on route to claiming two NBA championships. It was truly one of the cleanest stretches any team has had in NBA history. Their dominance in the Western Conference specifically truly shifted the way many franchises philosophically approached the KD seasons. The LA Clippers traded Chris Paul and went into rebuild mode. The San Antonio Spurs, they traded away Kawhi Leonard. The OKC Thunder sent Russell Westbrook out basically on his own, night in, night out. In my opinion, there was only two teams that assessed the challenge in front of them and said, yeah, we'll take our best shot at the KD Warriors. And those two teams were the Portland Trailblazers and the Houston Rockets. From 2016 through 2019, the Blazers were eliminated by the Warriors on three occasions, including the high watermark of the conference finals in 2019. But each year, they tried whatever they could to bolster their roster around Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. Unfortunately, it was never enough, and the Blazers never really stood a chance, including in the West Finals. The Rockets, however, well, they were a different story. Daryl Morey, who had been running the Rockets for a number of years with a penchant for analytics, acquired James Harden in 2012 from the OKC Thunder in one of the most lost upsided trades in NBA history. The Rockets made the playoffs in each of the eight following seasons, and after hiring Mike D'Antoni in 2016, were able to take their game to a whole nother level. D'Antoni brought his high-scoring three-point shooting philosophy to Houston, which meshed perfectly with Maury's vision for the team, and maximized James Harden's output in a truly historic fashion. Harden averaged 32 points, 9 assists per game over a four-year stretch playing under D'Antoni, including winning the MVP in 2018. Unfortunately for Harden and the Rockets, though, his high-volume production never translated into playoff success, as during that same four-year stretch, Harden dipped below 43% from the field in the playoffs and had multiple eyesore performances in close out games. It became clear the Rockets needed a secondary ball handler and creator to take the load off Harden, insert Chris Paul. Once again, I'll point out that the Rockets never sat back and were always willing to take their shot at the Warriors. This was evident in the summer of 2017, when Houston acquired one of the greatest point guards of all time, Chris Paul. CP3 nestled perfectly into the role of secondary ball handler next to Harden, even becoming the guy for the Rockets down the stretch in the 2018 playoffs. In the last two games, the biggest games in the last decade for the Houston Rockets, Chris Paul creates touches, dribbles, decides everything. The mix of Harden and CP3, along with role players such as Eric Gordon, Clint Capella, Trevor Ariza, PJ Tucker, seemed to be a potent cocktail mixed perfectly together to take down the Golden State Warriors, as Houston did take a 3-2 series lead. Unfortunately for the Rockets, though, disaster struck in Game 5, as despite getting the W, they took a huge L, as Chris Paul hurt his hamstring and was unavailable for the remainder of the series. With the offensive burden placed back on the shoulders of Harden, the Warriors Warriors blew out Houston in Game 6, leaving Harden to lament the strength of the Golden State side. I think it's the same thing for us as well. You know, they got four, what, four All-Stars on their team. <laughs> that helps, but... Complaining about the Warriors having four All-Stars? That's a real NBA Twitter move there, James. Regardless, the stage was set for a Game 7 with a trip to the NBA Finals on the line. For James Harden and the Rockets, a chance to prove they made the right call by going all-in to try and compete with these Warriors. For Kevin Durant and Golden State, a chance to prove they could become a dynasty and not be labeled a one-hit wonder. You leave Oklahoma City, you come to Golden State, you get a, you, you, you basically had a honeymoon season because there was no competition. The first time you face duress, this is what you do? This is unacceptable. Let's all take a trip to the Toyota Center in Houston, where for better or worse, there was a record-setting Game 7 of the Western Conference Finals in 2018. Oh, great. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Marv Albert, Chris Weber, Reggie Miller broadcasting this game. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Steph Curry was off on his first attempt of the evening, while Harden found his way to the line on his first touch. Harden is synonymous with getting to the free throw line, as we know, but after averaging 10 attempts a game during the regular season, he was down to only seven during this series. Klay Thompson picked up his second foul of the first quarter on Eric Gordon's drive, Steve Kerr electing to trust his guard and kept him in the game regardless. The Warriors' first points came off a pair of free throws from Durant, followed by Klay getting an easy look at the rim off a nice Steph Curry dime. 
Harden with a rare clean look from three on the left wing gave him an early five points, but the Warriors replied in short order with a Durant floater and a wide open look of his own for Steph Curry, his first hoop of the game. But the story of the early moments of game seven was James Harden. He rhythmically stepped back and splashed the three right in Klay Thompson's face, plus the foul. The third foul already for Klay just four minutes in, Harden would score 14 in a productive opening frame, and Klay really had the audacity to complain about that foul? Like, come on, dude. Harden was certainly locked early, but so was the Rockets' defense. On this possession, they nearly forced a turnover before closing out perfectly on the Warriors' shooters, leading to a wild Steph Curry attempt. And that defense turned to offense when Eric Gordon knocked down a long-range bomb. Houston started 3 of 4 from deep, on their way to break some kind of playoff record at that pace. I mentioned their defense. The Rockets were able to hold the Warriors to just nine points in the first seven minutes of this game. And that wasn't a surprise, by the way. Houston was sixth in defensive rating as a team during the regular season. And it was clear they were turned up on that end during the playoffs as well. The job that Houston has been doing on Golden State defensively has been insane. Look at James Harden, the way he's getting after it defensively. The Warriors successfully employed the hack a capella strategy with Clint missing a pair, while Gerald Green checked in the game and played like he had just received a pep talk from Matthew McConaughey's character in Wolf of Wall Street. You gotta pump those shot attempt numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. After P.J. Tucker connected on a three for Houston from the corner, Kevin Durant finally got free and found himself a perimeter jumper, bringing the Warriors to within four heading into a timeout. A great defensive play by rookie Jordan Bell led to a wide open fast break dunk for Draymond, Green's first points of game seven. Harden attacked Bell, however, on consecutive possessions, finding himself an easy pair of finishes at the rim. And after the teams traded a number of free throws, the Rockets headed into the first quarter break with a nice five point cushion. Into the second quarter, Steve Kerr with a bold coaching move as he reinserted Klay Thompson into the game despite those early three personal fouls. Thompson would score the first seven points of the quarter for the Warriors, including a debatable goaltending call. The Rockets were getting busy early though too with Harden on the bench, a PJ Tucker floater in the lane, an Eric Gordon slash to the rim, and another nifty finish by Gordon inside. Thompson answered with a tough layup, but after Harden re-entered the game, he was able to set up Clint Capella on a gorgeous alley-oop finish. Rockets grabbed a double-digit lead for the first time. Following a Warriors timeout, the game really did open up. Another beautiful Harden to Capella alley-oop, Klay Thompson an answer from the corner off a great Durant dime, Gerald Green finally stopped beating on his chest and chanting, and was able to make his only shot of the game from deep, Sean Livingston made his 7 millionth career mid-range pull-up jumper, Eric Gordon banged another bomb from deep, and Draymond Green dove to the rim just seconds later for two. Watch this play right here y'all. With the shot clock depleted, PJ Tucker was able to box out Kevin Durant to secure his fifth offensive rebound of the first half, leading to another Capella finish. PJ Tucker was so valuable to this Rockets team, man. After a James Harden steal and dunk in transition, the Rockets had a 15 point lead heading into a timeout, and in the words of Marv Albert just moments earlier, oh, is Corey White for the Rockets. Yeah, now would be a fantastic time uh, for any Rockets fans watching this video. Maybe turn this one off, it's really not going to get any better for you than this moment right here. As most of you probably know, Game 7 of the 2018 West Finals became historic because the Houston Rockets would go on to miss a playoff record 27 three-pointers in a row. Because I've committed to covering this game here on Basketball Cinema, I feel it's necessary for me to show you all each and every one of those misses. Yeah, it's about to happen. Does anyone have a thesaurus I could borrow? Not sure I have enough words to describe 27 straight misses. We've got to back up a smidge for the first three misses, as they did come when things were going well for Houston. Harden on a pull-up, no-go. Harden got stripped by Curry on his way up, which actually counted as a miss. And Eric Gordon tried denting the back of the rim on this one. Okay, we're all caught up now. Three down, 24 to go. Still up 15, these early misses didn't seem to be killing Houston, as Gordon once again miscalculated on a long-range attempt, but as Steph Curry showered a triple over Ryan Anderson, you knew the Warriors could explode at any moment in this game. James Harden drew nothing but air on what would become a very controversial attempt. As anyone with two eyes could see, that was a brutal miss foul call on Jordan Bell. Pretty sure if you have one eye, you could also see it too. Houston's defense continued to swarm, forcing another turnover, and Harden once again yeeted a three-point attempt after clearly being fouled again by Bell. I mean, that's at least gotta be a foul on the ground. And that one was costly as Clay cut the lead down to nine from the corner. 
Bell got the better of Harden for the third straight possession, this time a bit cleaner, blocking Harden on the drive. And PJ Tucker was off on a corner three. Harden was seemingly unfazed by the missed calls. A sexy feed to Clint Capella for an easy dunk? With a chance to build on an 11 point lead, Harden was apagado on one of the cleanest looks of the game. Yeah, Jay Spanish here. And why not one more brick from James? He was just one for nine from the field in a forgettable second quarter, but the Rockets somehow remained up 11 at the half after an Eric Gordon lay in in transition. In case you were thinking to yourself, man, the Rockets should really have stopped launching so many threes. Well, yeah, you're probably right. But shooting threes was simply Rockets basketball. It was their DNA. They led the league with 42 attempts from deep per game in the regular season, seven more than the next closest team. They were never gonna stop shooting, even as we see them missing another four attempts to begin the second half. And even Harden, James Harden, believed they were eventually gonna fall. We had a lot of open shots. I think we competed it and they competed it, you know the best we can. More bad luck for Houston as well during this stretch, as Harden was denied a potential four-point play when this foul was ruled to be on the ground. Yeah, another questionable call. Harden obviously didn't like it. A couple calls that just, you know, just weren't, weren't right. Fortunately, while this was an all-time ugly performance by Houston, the Warriors were dealing with a bit of an identity crisis of their own. Despite all the misses, Golden State was unable for a long stretch in the game to change the outlook of Game 7. Steve Kerr was seemingly at a loss for why his Warriors were playing so poorly. I walked in at halftime, I, I said, I don't even recognize this team. We've been together for four years. I didn't recognize the, the group that we were seeing, but sometimes you forget, you know, Game 7, you get you get some nerves and, and um, there's so much uh, nervous energy and it was really, I don't know how else to describe it, it was a bizarre our half. But with the shade under eight minutes remaining in the third, things took a hard U-turn. PJ Tucker bricking another wide open corner three. After an offensive rebound, Eric Gordon took his turn at not finding the net, while on the other end, Swaggy P lets go, converting his lone attempt of the evening. Trevor Ariza was 0 for 12 in game seven, including failing miserably at trying a Michael Jordan post fade from deep. Also another good look from the corner, Niet. Yes, Jay Russia is here. It was at this point Reggie Miller caught on to the fact that, yeah, things weren't going so well for the Rockets from the perimeter. We're seeing that a lot from Houston right now. Six of 31, 19%. They're, that's their MO. They're going to shoot 40 plus, but they're not falling. Maybe a little bit louder, Reg, so uh, Mike D'Antoni can hear you. He probably needs some advice. Draymond found an easy hoop inside off a nice Steph Curry feed, and Steph followed that up with a three from the corner after, well, what seemed like another missed foul call on Jordan Bell, this time a moving screen. Gerald Green... No! Missed another, and with a chance for the Warriors to draw even, Kevin Durant knocked down his fourth triple of the game. The third quarter belonged to one Steph Curry, however. Another dribble handoff corner three is money, a clean layup inside for two, a fortunate bounce on a three after breaking off poor Ryan Anderson, and hey Steph, how about, how about one more for us? Curry fires for three, yes! A personal 11-2 run for Steph Curry against the Rockets, as during that stretch, Houston just kept missing threes. Just stop it already, please, please. Watching the Rockets go 0 for 14 from three in the third quarter was like watching Apollo Creed refusing to give up against Ivan Drago in Rocky IV. Just throw in the towel. Somehow the Rockets weren't dead though, as a pair of late Eric Gordon buckets drew Houston back to within four, which wasn't ideal, but certainly could have been a lot worse. In fact, James Harden knew his team still had a shot heading into the fourth quarter. Even they went up, I think they ended up, up seven, but we had opportunities. You know, a lot of opportunities, and then even in that fourth quarter. Hey James, maybe if you just chill with the threes, you'll be good, bro. Just, just an idea, I, I don't know. Setting aside the Rockets part of this equation, Game 7 in 2018 really showed the ultimate inevitability of this Warriors team. Despite a sluggish, uninterested start to the game, when it got down to brass tacks, Steph Curry time and again pulled Golden State up by their bootstraps. For whatever reason, he seems to infuse us with energy. Kevin keeps us going with his just methodical scoring. But when Steph and Clay get it going uh, from three, that's when our team really seems to take off. And oh yeah, they also uh, also still had Clay Thompson, who got the quarter started with a deep two. Harden actually wasn't settling in the final frame, getting a pair of easy looks to fall to get back within seven points. But again, if it wasn't Steph Curry doing the damage, how does a Clay Thompson transition triple sound to you guys? Good? A anybody? Any takers? Eric Gordon missed number 24 in a row for Houston. Ariza again missed number 25. And Eric Gordon back like Arnold in Terminator for the 26th miss in a row. And as if to rub salt directly in the wound, Kevin Durant. Durant over Harden. Durant. 
for three. Oh. Yes. Oh, what a oh. shot for Kevin Durant. Oh. So here we are, Rockets down 13 in the fourth quarter after Harden made history with the Rockets 27th miss in a row, when all seemed to be lost, when it seemed like we would never make it out of the underground sewage tunnel and crawl to fresh air. Pops it out, here's Tucker for three. Finally, they hit a three after missing 27 in a row. That's unbelievable. We made it, y'all. I'm, re I'm really proud of us. That was that was tough. And down 10 with six minutes left, the lid finally came off the basket. The Rockets legitimately still had a shot in game seven. Eric Gordon from the lane, two of his 23 on the night. Give EG another hoop off a tough finish around Klay Thompson. Hey Houston, great plan getting to the rim. Probably could have tried that a little bit sooner. Where the third quarter belonged to Steph, Kevin Durant took control of the fourth in this one. Putting in two of his 11 fourth quarter points here, Clay once again had a toe on the line as he knocked down another jumper off a nice Draymond feed. Another strategic move from Steve Kerr to once again hack a Capella as Clint would make just two of four free throws on the next couple possessions before being subbed out. Durant with a gimme at the rim off a Steph Curry assist, and the pressure was officially on the Rockets to start making up ground quickly. A beautiful step back Jimmy from mid range for Harding, but PJ Tucker split a pair of free throws when Houston really needed every single point. And James with a brutal turnover on that pass, and Draymond was the beneficiary on the other end in transition. And y'all, I'm, uh... Not really sure what to do here. Thus far on Basketball Cinema, we've always covered games with really epic finishes, but this one, Harden put in a couple garbage time baskets, the Rockets missed a couple more threes because why not, and the Golden State Warriors clinched a spot in the NBA Finals for the fourth consecutive season. Their dynasty saved by the worst shooting performance in NBA history. Game 7 of the 2018 West Finals had a chance to usher in a massive shift in the NBA had things gone the way of the Houston Rockets. Despite cleaning up in 2017, the Golden State Warriors had some question marks surrounding them at this time, including what the future would look like with the core of Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and of course, Kevin Durant. Had things not broke their way in 2018, the Warriors' case to be called a dynasty would have had next to no credibility. By joining the Warriors, Kevin Durant risked being viewed by NBA pundits and fans as someone who took an easy way out in an effort to win championships. Could you imagine if he only ended up getting the one in Golden State? Fortunately for Curry, Durant, and the entire Warriors crew, time has looked favorably upon them for how 2018 played out. Because in the moment, even with the win, it was hard to disagree with Max Kellerman's take on it. Did they get lucky that the team they played was missing their best player and that they shot historically poorly, an all-time choke performance by multiple members of the team? Of course they did. It was among the luckiest situations I can recall in major team sports for the winning team. I mean, he's not really wrong. For the Rockets, this was the beginning of the end for what looked like it could be a wildly successful run for the organization. They would fall short against the Warriors once again in 2019, before getting dismantled by the Lakers in 2020. And the most painful aspect of the 2018 run for Rockets fans is that the team waiting for them in the NBA Finals was a woefully undermanned Cleveland Cavaliers team led by LeBron James. For all intents and purposes, the 2018 West Finals was the actual NBA Finals, as there's almost no logical case to make as how the Cavs could have beaten the Rockets that year either. Missing an NBA playoff record amount of threes in Game 7 was the deciding factor in who was going to win the championship in 2018. When you focus the lens further on what that all could have meant for the Rockets, things get incredibly juicy as a what-if scenario. James Harden's career is nowhere near finished. As we know, in an ironic turn of fate, he's once again teamed up with Kevin Durant this time in Brooklyn. But regardless of how the latter stage of his career turns out, if he was able to will his Houston Rockets team to a victory over the most talented team ever assembled back in 2018, in addition to winning the MVP that year, man! we'd look at James Harden very differently in terms of his legacy. In addition, had the Rockets pulled off a Game 7 victory, it's fair to assume Chris Paul would have made his return to action and finally tasted the sweet nectar of playing in the NBA Finals. Unlike Harden, CP3 and the Phoenix Suns aren't the runaway favorites to win an NBA title in the next few seasons, and it certainly looks as though Chris is heading towards retiring as the greatest player to never win a ring. While he wasn't necessarily in his prime in 2018, there wasn't a better shot for CP3 to reach the promised land. Unfortunately, his his hamstring had other plans. 
The last piece of this discussion I want to talk about in terms of legacy is that of then Rockets head coach Mike D'Antoni. Mike was a catalyst in ushering in the current era of high scoring, high powered offensive basketball that we see in the NBA, back in his days with the Steve Nash led Phoenix Suns. After a pair of fruitless stops in New York and LA, he was given the chance to run that reckless style of play once again with Houston and as we've covered, he was a hair away from reaching the NBA Finals for the first time in his career. For better or worse, the mindset from D'Antoni has basically never wavered over his coaching career, including the thought of maybe shooting less threes in Game 7? No, because the other teams do it. It would be different if they were... They, no, not at all. No, that's what you do. That's where the game's going. He certainly helped change the game, but D'Antoni has the second most playoff wins by a coach who's never made an NBA Finals appearance. And that's a pretty tough look. For each game covered here on Basketball Cinema, I'll be giving out three awards, beginning with the Clint Hawkeye Barton Award for Most Underrated Performer. I don't care. Which goes to Jordan Bell. This was a really tough game to recognize an underrated performer because for the Warriors, it was basically the Durant, Curry, Clay, Dre show all night, with very few contributions offensively elsewhere. Bell, however, gave the Warriors 16 good minutes off the bench, filled the stat sheet with five rebounds, three assists, a steal, and a block. He also got away with nearly murdering James Harden a couple times without being called for a foul. So that's fun. The Rick Dalton <laughs> award for most recognizable moment goes to that aforementioned sequence of missed calls on James Harden, featuring the dude I just talked about, Jordan Bell. In the moment back in 2018, there was a large amount of anti-warrior sentiment among basketball fans and media, and this sequence specifically was pointed to as the NBA favoring or even rigging the series in Golden State's direction. That's a bridge too far for me, but man, those were some brutal no-calls re-watching this game. And finally, the Mark Jackson with all due respect, award for weirdest moment in this game goes to Nick Young, who apparently had a dream involving Dennis Rodman prior to Game 7. Although the dream of the story when Nick Young said he had a dream the other night that Dennis Rodman popped into the dream and said, you know, you should be playing better defense and you will. Nick said, okay. Well, I hope he had that That's dream it. last night. <laughs> I mean, shout out Nick Young Swaggy P for dreaming about Dennis Rodman. That's how you know your head is really in the game. And that's it. The Golden State Warriors beat the Houston Rockets 101-92 in Game 7 of the 2018 West Finals on May 28, 2018. The Rockets took the live by the three, die by the three philosophy to their grave in Game 7, and were one of the only teams that actually took a legitimate swing at the Warriors dynasty. If you enjoyed this episode of the show, please consider dropping a like down below, and if you can see yourself watching ah, a few more of these in the future, I'd suggest hitting that subscribe button as well. Maybe turning on notifications too. Next week, we'll be throwing it back to the 1980s for a look at one of the prevailing NBA dynasties who took on a young future Hall of Famer in the NBA Finals. But until then, I'm Jay Canada, and this has been Basketball Cinema. And maximize James ha Once again, I'll point out that the Rockers- mm -hmm. The Houston Rockets took the live by the three, die by the th three. Clay Thompson, an answer from the corner for a gray- Hey, Reg, maybe, maybe say it a little louder so Mike D'Antoni can help- uh. As we know in an art, as we know in an art, as we know in an act, oh my goodness.